fucking beautiful. You're like a true baker. <laughs> How's it going everyone? Morgan Eisenberg here and today we are making really good bread aka easy no need artisan bread. Now to me this recipe is the chef's kiss of low effort but high quality bread. We're talking a thick crackly crust and a chewy open crumb with no kneading and less than 30 minutes of active hands-on work required. So even if you've never made bread before you can make this recipe right here and I'm going to teach you how. This recipe is so easy, you can do it in your sleep because it's an overnight bread. So the night before baking, we're gonna mix together all the ingredients so that the dough can rise overnight. Now I'm gonna be using my kitchen scale for this recipe, but if you don't have one, don't worry. I'll give you the measurements in cups too. Now you can use all purpose flour for this recipe, but I really recommend that you use bread flour, which is gonna have a higher protein content. So it's going to give you more chewiness and structure in your bread. You're gonna add 480 grams of that flour to your bowl, along with nine grams of kosher salt, which is gonna be enough to add flavor to your bread without inhibiting the yeast too much. Speaking of which, this is the yeast we're using. It's instant yeast. Now we're only gonna be using two grams of it, which seems like a really small amount for that much flour, but what's gonna happen if you use too much yeast in no need recipes like this is that the dough is gonna rise way too quickly and then it's actually gonna deflate by the time you're able to use it. So if you're wondering why we even bother with a long rise in the first place, the answer is twofold. The first reason is flavor. So just like with cheese or wine or leftovers or tomato sauce, dough develops deeper, more complex flavors as it rests. So if you want a bread that's delicious and has a lot of dimension, it's best to give it more time in the dough stage. The second is to develop gluten in the bread. So gluten is basically a net that gives bread its structure, and it forms when the two main proteins in flour get in contact with water and bond together to form strands. Normally, kneading helps gluten develop faster and stronger because you're pushing those proteins and smaller strands around so they can link up and form a bigger net. But in no knead breads, you're relying on the gas bubbles released by yeast in the rising process to move those proteins around so they can link up on their own. And if you're thinking, those seem like really tiny movements, you're exactly right, and that's why we wanna give it a lot of time to work. There is one way that we can make the process easier though, and that's by adding a lot of water to the dough. So you're gonna use 360 grams of room temperature water in this recipe, and having a high hydration percentage is basically going to help make a slippery environment that allows the proteins to move around and bump into each other more easily. It's also gonna allow us to get that crispy crust in that open crumb that we talked about earlier. Now, using a clean hand, get right in there and mix until you get a loose dough. It might seem weird at first, but using your fingers instead of a spoon is actually gonna make it so much easier to feel if there are any pockets of flour or water that you still need to mix in. And yes, your fingers are going to get doughy in the process, but one, it washes off super easily, and two, it's honestly kind of fun. So once your dough becomes sort of a shaggy ball, you can cover your dough with saran wrap or a second bowl, and let it rise while you sleep. All right, here we are 14 hours later and our dough is looking good. It's definitely risen, so let's go in there and move any remaining yeast around and strengthen up the dough. The easiest way to do this, as you might be able to tell, is to use a wet hand and go in the bowl and then stretch and fold the dough over on itself. Make sure that you're turning the bowl a little bit in between stretches and folds, and you're also gonna wanna make sure that your hand stays wet because that's what prevents the dough from sticking to you. You'll notice towards the end that the dough gets a lot harder to stretch, and that just means that you've done a good job, your dough is strengthened, and now you can cover it and let it rise for another one to two hours. And when your dough looks like this, it's good to go. So let me move that out of the way and we're gonna bring in our cutting board. Now you're gonna wanna really generously flour your cutting board. And then what you're gonna wanna do is very gently use your hand to lift and separate the dough from the bowl and tip it out slowly onto your board. Now grab some more flour and sprinkle the top so you can shape this loaf more easily. And remember, we're not kneading here, but we are folding and shaping to introduce some more structure and create a good round. So to start, fold each side of the dough inward, overlapping the last side like this. 
And when you get to that point, you can then take the edges and start to pull them towards the center. And this is going to help form a much rounder loaf. The dough is probably going to fight you a little bit. That's actually good. It means that you're creating surface tension. So once it looks like that, just sprinkle with a bit more flour if you need, and then gently plop it over. Turn the dough and smooth down the irregular sides just to make this a little more even. We are going for rustic though, so if your dough has a bit of dimpling or some small bulges here and there like mine does, or even more, we can definitely embrace that. All right, that's looking good, so let's move the dough out of the way and prepare our parchment paper. This might catch you off guard. But you're gonna wanna crumple that up really tight into a ball, and then you're just gonna flatten it back out. This is gonna stop the parchment from trying to roll back up on itself as if it was still on the tube. And it's also gonna help the parchment mold more easily to the shape of the Dutch oven, which is great because then you don't wind up getting any like big folds or creases in your bread from it baking up against big folds in the paper. So go ahead and grab your dough and carefully place it on top of the parchment. Give it an optional boop if you want and then cover it one last time while you preheat the oven. Now set the oven to 450 degrees and we're not just gonna preheat the oven, we're also gonna preheat our Dutch oven. And that's the best way to ensure that you're going to get good oven spring, which is going to be the final push that helps your bread rise up nice and high. Dutch ovens are really great because they kind of mimic what goes on in a bakery oven. They trap hot air in a small space and they also prevent evaporated water from escaping because of the lid. So you have a super humid environment in there and that's going to help the bread stay moist, it's going to help a glossier crust to develop, and it's going to allow the bread to rise more easily. So if you don't have a Dutch oven, I have a link to this one in the description below, and I have more information about how to make this bread if you don't have one in the blog post. An hour later and the oven is ready and our Dutch oven has built up plenty of heat. You'll see if you poke the dough now, it's gonna spring back really slowly and it's still gonna leave a slight indent, which means that your dough is ready to bake. Before you bake it though, you're gonna score the top to help the bread expand nicely. So if you have a lame, you can get a flawless score on your bread, but I just use my serrated knife and you can make any sort of shape from little slits to a long line, but you wanna try and do it quickly and confidently so you don't yank the bread and deflate it too much. I also kind of made a smiling alien face, which was unintentional, but I like it. Now move the dough out of the way and bring in your Dutch oven. Remember this Dutch oven is very hot, very, very hot. So be careful. Grab the edges of your parchment paper and gently drop the loaf in there. And if the parchment's a little uneven, you can adjust it, but be careful. You see, I almost burnt myself there, don't do that. All right, that's looking good. So now just cover it and get that bread in the oven. 30 minutes later, and let's check on our bread and see how it looks. It actually is looking really great. It's a great shape, but we do want more browning. So let's pop it back in the oven without the lid on this time. And 30 minutes later, Check that out. That loaf is so pretty. All right, now we're just going to very carefully lift the bread out with the parchment and then go ahead and set that hot Dutch oven aside. Now carefully slide the bread onto the wire rack so it can fully cool. And as it cools, this bread is actually going to still do a lot. The inside is going to contract and pull in the crust so you can actually hear a crackling sound as it cools down. I don't know why, I just love that so much. Now, if you want, you can cut into your bread after about 30 minutes. But starch retrogradation is still occurring for hours after baking. That means the water is still moving outward and escaping as steam, and that process is gonna firm up the crumb. So if you cut in the bread while it's still warm, you might find a dense gummy interior because the molecules are still waterlogged. It's actually best to let the bread sit for six to eight hours before slicing it, but I'm not that patient, so I have another loaf I baked up about an hour before this one. Same exact technique, and I feel like we can probably slice into that one now. All right, here we go, moment of truth. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. You're gonna get an almost ciabatta-like crumb from high hydration doughs like this. So they're really chewy and you have some larger holes and some smaller holes as well. I mean, that really turned out perfectly. And my mouth is actually watering now. This bread smells so good. 
So let me butter this up and give it a try. Now I have really good butter, so I'm gonna be generous with it here and make sure my bread is fully covered. And since it's unsalted butter, I'm actually also going to sprinkle over just a little flaky sea salt. So that's just how I enjoy my bread most. You know, it's so simple, but homemade crusty bread with butter is like a transcendental experience. Butting into fresh bread that you made yourself makes you feel poetic or like moving to a cabin in the woods, you know what I mean? Maybe that sounds ridiculous, but I just think that this is something everyone should try. And I think you're really gonna love not only the final result, but also the process of making this bread. So let me know in the comments what you want to see next, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new here, and I'm going to go eat this whole loaf.